Suck her blood. I don't want to hold her <laughs> What was that? <laughs> this is going to be a good year. Uh, not this shit. The best game ever. Hello and welcome to Hawks Recap. Game 69, nice, has just concluded as the Blackhawks win, nice, 7-1, to one, nice, over the Arizona Coyotes. In addition to that, Brendan Perlini scored his first career hat trick against his former team, nice, and in addition, addition to that, the Avalanche lost, nice, the Wild lost, nice. Um, Blackhawks defense, can we talk about them? They've given up one goal in each of the last two games. Nice! On the flip side, Blackhawks power play 0 for a crap ton lately. Uh, not so nice. Turning it back around, Blackhawks winning despite their ice cold power play. Nice. Brendan Perlini obviously had the hat trick tonight, but over the last five games or so, he's been on a very nice uh, streak. He's got the hot hand. Also, Chris Kunitz playing well. That's nice to see. Blackhawks on a three-game winning streak right now, undefeated since David Camp's return. I said it in the last video, I'm going to say it again. There is a real possibility right now that the Hawks may never lose again. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Actually, that might kind of get a little boring. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it wouldn't. You know, I always enjoy playing teams like the Arizona Coyotes because we get to see a lot of familiar faces. Obviously, Jalmerson, you got Osterley, you got Henestroza, you got Richard Panic, who scored the first goal in this game. Uh, and the Coyotes have a lot of guys injured, too, uh, one of them being Nick Schmaltz. Um, I still like the kid, but that trade has turned out nice. So as I mentioned, uh, Richard Panic first goal in this game, four and a half minutes in. Uh, unfortunate break uh, in this one for the Hawks. They're trying to go D to D around the back of the net, around the boards, but the puck hits the official and comes back right to a Coyotes player. Hawks caught out position now because they're expecting it not to hit the official. And just scrambling, there's a big scramble in front. Crawford makes the initial save, but he's down. His rebound, uh, Panic picks it up, backhand puts it into the back end of the net. Unfortunate break from the Hawks. Those are the types of things that happen. Uh, you can't really blame the official. They do their best to get out of the way of the puck. Sometimes the puck just you know moves too fast and hits them. And that's the bad breaks that you can get in hockey. You just got to find a way to overcome it. And the Hawks did that, which was nice. About two minutes after that goal, Brendan Perlini tacks on his first of the game, a beautiful stretch pass from Seabrook, finds Perlini sprinting up the middle of the ice. He's on a breakaway. He beats the goaltender, ties it at one, and then not even two minutes after that, Jonathan Taze makes a great pass to the crease area where Brandon Saad is just boxing out the defender, has a stick on the ice, redirects the puck into the back of the net, and it's 2-1 Blackhawks. That's how it would go into the second period, and the Hawks would never look back. I mean, this was probably one of, if not the best games I've seen the Blackhawks play this year. The Coyotes are a fast team, but the Hawks look just as fast. And, I mean, the Hawks were battling uh, for every puck. They were making it really, really difficult for the Coyotes to get any sort of space or opening. The Hawks... Uh, Obviously, a 7-1 scoreline uh, seems obvious, but if you look at the core of this, like the team that wanted it more won this game. The Hawks were winning board battles. They were just winning battles in general. Like They were just absolutely attacking the puck for a full 60 minutes in this game. I don't know if we've ever seen that in the, in the last two, two years, at least. Like This was a fantastic game. This is two straight games from the Hawks. 120 minutes of just absolutely fantastic hockey. Three minutes into the second period, uh, Cahoon has the puck in the corner, does a good job shielding it from the defender, finds uh, Strom out front, who then makes a great pass over to Perlini, who somehow finds a way to get the shot off and gets it by the goaltender, gets a second of the game. Blackhawks up 3-1 to one early in the second. Then six and a half minutes into the second, Dahlstrom makes an incredible play at the blue line to keep the puck in. Just barely, just barely, but he does. Puts the puck on net. Uh, it kind of gets deflected or blocked in front, and it's kind of a scramble. 
Camp uh, and Kruger are there. Camp picks up the puck and he just throws a backhand pass cross crease. Nobody's expecting it. And guess who's there? Chris Kunitz. I mean, he knows where to be. He's won four cups, people. Come on. A wide open net. He's not going to miss from there. Unlike, unlike this guy in my beer league game Sunday night. Oh my gosh, this is a story. So we're losing 5 0. Uh, and. So we decided to pull our goalie with like a minute left in the game because why not? What are we going to lose? So we pull our goalie, get some chances, but ultimately we turn the puck over. They have a guy, gets the puck in the neutral zone, uh, kind of cherry picking a little bit, and he's skating towards our empty net. And this is a guy who'd been calling for the puck, like hitting his stick on the ice like the entire game, nothing to show for it. And he's skating towards our empty net, and I, I, I'm not lying. you got to believe me when I say this. From a foot away from our empty net, he misses. He misses. Oh my goodness. Like, that just made my entire night. We could have lost 20 to nothing. I wouldn't have cared. It absolutely made my night. I was the happiest man alive. It was absolutely hilarious. I'm just so disappointed I don't have video of it for you because we do have Live Barn. It's like a video service for ranks that it like an automatic camera that kind of like pans with the play and, and records it as like online streaming service and stuff. But the, the camera like didn't pan fast enough. It didn't follow because there was no, it was like just one guy. So it like didn't pick it up and didn't pan fast enough. I wish I had the video. Oh my God, it was great. It was great. But moral of the story is Kunis isn't gonna miss that. And he didn't. And the Hawks uh, are up, what, 5-1, five, 4-1, five, one? Four, one? Four, one. It would be 5-1 shortly thereafter. Uh, Ekman Larson, the puck just kind of rolls on him. He loses it. Cahoon picks it up and drop past the Kane over to Anisimov. Back to Kane to the back of the net. 5-1. Jonathan Taze would get a breakaway later in the period. He would get slashed on, so he would have a penalty shot in which he would convert on 5-hole. 30th goal of the year. He has 70 points now for the only the second time in his career. Uh, this is the first time since 2000-2001 that the Blackhawks have had three 30-plus goal scorers. Uh, back in those days, it was Eric Daze, Steve Sullivan, Tony Amante. Now, that, that's the team. Those are the players like I grew up uh, with. I can't really say grew up watching because it was really tough to watch the Blackhawks in that era. I know if you're like a more recent fan, that may seem crazy, but like in that era, that time, like Blackhawks weren't really shown on TV. Like if you caught them on ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey, like that was that was where you'd be able to see them. Saw them a lot in the video games, though. Also scored with them a lot in the video games. We had some dynasties back then. So the Blackhawks up 6-1 to one going into the third period. Like, oh my god, we still have another period left to go here. Like, what do you even do? Because you're not really concerned about scoring because you have a five-goal lead. Uh, but you can't just, like, not try because then the other team is going to get back into it. Uh, so you got to play shutdown defense, but you can't turtle. Um, Blackhawks did exactly that. Played great defense. Uh, had their own scoring chances as well. Obviously didn't take unnecessary risks and just played a great solid period of hockey. And this game should have ended 6-1, to one, but the Arizona Coyotes bit off just a little more than they could chew. The Blackhawks were completely contempt with just running out the clock in this one, but the Coyotes decided to pressure them, so the Blackhawks just decided to just lift the puck up into the neutral zone, just toss it up in the air, get rid of it out of the defensive zone. Rogue Bounce finds the brink at stick. He races in by the defenders, uh, throws it cross-crease to Perlini, hits off escape. Perlini taps it in with three seconds left to go in the game to get his first career hat trick and make this game finish 7-1. to one. Do you see what you get when you mess with the warrior? It was honestly looking like Perlini just, he wasn't going to get the hat trick. He got absolutely robbed, not once, but twice in this game, uh, trying to get his hat trick. Absolutely, absolutely robbed. It was insane. Speaking of being robbed, Dylan Sakura has got to be the most unluckiest guy right now. He has 
had incredible chances to score, has had incredible shots, and he just keeps getting robbed again and again. I feel bad for the kid. Like, he should have his first career NHL goal by now. It's insane. With all that said, this was a nice win for the Hawks. Very nice win. They find themselves now five points out of the wild card. Uh, I... Look, <laughs> I don't think they're going to make it. I still don't believe they're going to make it. Uh, but, like I said, there's a serious possibility that they may never lose again. So if that's the case, well, then they're, you know, they'd probably make it. But Hawks have to play the Maple Leafs next in Toronto. Leafs lost to the Lightning 6-2 to two tonight. So the Leafs are going to be coming out firing. They're going to come out hard on Wednesday. Blackhawks, they want to get their fourth win in a row here. Uh, they got to be ready for that. And speaking of being ready, I think I'm ready now to end this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I always appreciate that. Remember, if we get to 400 subscribers by the end of the year, doing a giveaway. So let's get there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Let's do it. But most importantly, as always, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.